Hello guys and welcome to update 69 of Fred Alliance. This is probably the most exciting update purely because the game is finally being released at last after six years of development. Ooh, this is really exciting for me and I'm sure for many other people. And uh, what a journey has it been, it was quite quite something. There was a trailer released for the game that was made by a friend of mine, Joe. And it was released about two weeks ago, and if you haven't seen that, go check it out. Because it shows the game from a completely different perspective than you see in the update videos. And it's absolutely amazing. It's like three minutes long, I think. And it's, it's incredible. Go check it out. And there's also going to be a second trailer, which is going to be released like a week after the release of the game. So probably in a week time. Yeah, something like that. But let's go into the update video. So, first things first, uh, I'm gonna, I don't remember if I've shown this in the previous update, but the first thing is, uh, the languages now contain Russian and French, you can change the game to Russian, I'll quickly show you that, the whole menu is in Russian, and everything in game will be in Russian as well as French, if you change to French, so this is really useful and convenient. That's the first thing. And now, let's quickly go up to the enemy outpost, because we are in the mountain stars level, and I'll quickly show you the few things here. Uh, so the first thing you may notice is, I have an AK, like a weird AK. It's an AK with uh, Xenomag and the Cobra Sight, and it's called Povstanyev, which means rebel in Russian. Anyway, it has a, a red dot sight, because a lot of, not really a lot, but certain weapons in the game now have red dot sights or various kind of attachments, like especially special ones. Do I have a sniper rifle? Yeah, I think I do. Let's take out uh, the watch right there, so he doesn't spot us later. And I'm gonna quickly say, because I don't... Oh, okay, so the guy is coming close. I have a silenced pistol as well with me right now. So, again, this is one of those special weapons that you can find if you if you explore and if you check Contact. every... God damn it, he saw me. Okay, let me reload that, because... I thought he already went away. He already went away. Um, so you can find the special weapons all around the game. They are hidden in uh, sneaky locations, I guess you can say. You have, really have to look for them. But if you find them, it will feel rewarding. Also, the trailer shows off one of the new weapons, which I haven't shown yet uh, in the, any of the update videos or anywhere else. So that's really cool. Is he gone? I hope he's gone. I hope he's not standing there. Okay, yes, he is gone. Let's, let's follow him and kill him. So, the stealth sections have two ways of approaching. You can either kill them with a baton, by knocking them out with a right mouse click, which you can now charge. So I'm now holding the right mouse button. If I let go, he will sway and uh, hit. But, let's take him out. It's a weird noise you make, my friend. Anyway, uh, so, some enemies in the game now drop also special weapons. Kind of, not really. They drop weapons with side attachments. For example, the guys with an M4, they can sometimes drop an M4 with a, with a side, Cobra side in this case. I don't know if this guy has it. Uh, no, okay, this guy has an iron side, so I'll have to find someone with a red dot side. Another thing that was added in this update, and this is really, really important, is the volumetric lighting. So, as you can see, that guy he has a, a volumetric lighting coming out from his helmet, so you can see which direction he is facing. And this is really, really important. And when you kill him, the helmet will fall off and the volumetric lighting will remain, and you can see it's, it's, it's a really nice effect. It helps with the stealth, it helps with figuring out which direction the enemies are facing, and it's just really convenient. Yes, you do. Let's take out this guy. There is also volumetric lighting inside there. It's basically volumetric lighting has been implemented into the whole game. And one more thing I'm going to quickly show you while I'm here. So you can now change uh, the, the preset, kind of. So you have the real-time reflection, which is SSR, but I simplified it to real-time reflection. Uh, you can have it on high or on ultra, and same as ambient inclusion, and with volumetric lighting. So changing these will obviously impact the performance. But I won't change them because um, my settings are on pretty high level right now. But yeah, so let's let's keep it the way it is. Uh, what can I do here to show you? Uh, oh yeah, we still have to find a guy with an M4 with a scope. I think there might be one upstairs. Let's let's quickly go upstairs. 
Uh, one more thing I changed. I updated slightly the way the ladders work, but you probably won't even know that because you haven't probably tested the way the ladders work anyway. Let's let's sit here and wait for the guard to come around because I think he should be coming around soon. Oh yeah, there he is. There is his volumetric lighting in. And there. Hello. Knock you out, man. Uh, there is some ammo. Let's take that. Uh, let's see. There's going to be a dialogue upcoming here on the left. The rebels are going to invade soon enough. The squad that has been patrolling the outskirts of the killing those guys will alert everyone because they are in a group and killing the enemies in the group. I mean, they will but see sir, that you kill their buddy, so they will alert everyone. Okay. Take care of him. Hmm. Yes, there is something here. I remember there was something. We must make sure that no rebel is even close to the entrance for Dr. Grace. Let's be really sneaky plane. here so they don't see me. We are going to wait another half Ah, hour. yes, okay, so this guy. This guy has an M4 with a Cobra set as well, which makes it so much easier to use than before. It's really nice. Okay, oh, uh, one more thing I completely forgot about. It's that all the sounds in the game have been updated. So, that includes the sounds that props make, the sounds weapons make, the sounds just environment makes it's pretty much every sound in the game has been updated and changed and they were found by me adrian and another friend of mine glad so that's really really good so breaking the objects now makes different sound and they all sound really really good so for example that or the plastic crate or just this another thing i've done actually is uh, the physics can now kind of be they uh, not really improved, but they are uh, kind of been optimized for the performance in a way that before, when you would break an object, the pieces would become static, whereas now the pieces will remain uh, active. You can keep moving things around. Because before, I used uh, that system that I used before was back from Unity 4, which is like three years ago, where I used to just freeze objects once you destroy them. But right now, I'm using object pooling, so I'm able to instantiate objects without major performance impact, and uh, the objects that have been instantiated previously will be replaced. And like you know, kind of when you spawn too many objects, the old ones will get disabled, and the new ones will spawn. So there is never like this, uh, never too many objects in the scene. Basically, they're destroyed. So now, because of that, I'm able to have kind of more. I guess then I'm destructive physics going on. So now the objects are never static when you destroy them. But that's kind of a good addition. And I'm using object pooling for pretty much anything that you instantiate in the game. That, in that basically covers like the bullet shells, the muzzle flashes, the smokes, the destroyed props as well. They're all also using object pooling. Just pretty much anything that you instantiate in the game. And it's a pretty good technique. Like It, it really actually does help to optimize the game. So, let's... what else can I show you here? Oh, okay, so one more thing I'm gonna show. I'm gonna... Oh no, let's let's save properly, let's use F6 to save, let's not use the console. <laughs> Me being a developer, like, I use console for everything, literally, <laughs> like, even saving and loading, and it's, it's, it's like a bad... It's a bad habit to show on stream, I mean, not stream, but the video, anyway, don't mind that. So, I'm gonna quickly show you one thing with the explosions. Because explosions have been like heavily optimized as well now. If you remember before, explosion explosions were causing a really big lag, uh, and they would freeze the entire level. And that was for multiple things, for multiple reasons. Uh, for one, that's because I was pushing, applying force to too many objects at the same time, as well as sending too many calls to various objects. For example, like finding enemies and sending alert calls, or sending like uh, damage calls or something like that. I was just doing a lot of things at the same time, and this level being really dense, that would result in like 500 messages or things being called in one frame, so that was really like pretty bad on performance. But I've optimized that by a uh, few ways. I've been storing many objects that were searched at runtime, and as well as just reducing the amount of things that are being called from one object. So, as well as that, I have added fire to objects. So when you destroy an object with an explosion, it can get seven fire, including the enemies. 
So, did I save? Yeah, okay, I'll save again just in case. But, for example, if I walk over to those guys and if I fire an RPG there, they will get some on the fire and probably those wooden crates will get some on the fire as well. So yeah, these guys are not set to fire in their game, which is really nice. And as you can see, there was pretty much no lag during the explosion. So that's really, really good. The volumetric lighting also... Oh god, okay, I'm, not I'm gonna die here once again. Oh, 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 oh. oh boy. I don't wanna die. I don't wanna shoot either, I always shoot in my videos. Okay. <laughs> I'm really bad at this game. <laughs> okay, let's let's kill him as an RPG. There we go. And as you can see, there is a lot of fire in this level now because there was a lot of explosions. So, what else can I show in this level? Um, I need to find some help first of all. Or I can just cheat health, but you know, I always do that. Let's not do that for once. Mm. I think there's some help in this. No, okay, there's definitely not here. I'm probably gonna die now, but anyway, it's about time to go for the next level as well. Anyway, oh, there's help. But this, and my still is dark. My screen is dark, so the screen gets darker as you are low in health, which is kind of an effect. For like when you're playing without health, you need a way to know like when you're low in health, and this is my way of telling the player that you're low in health. I don't think there's any health packs in this level. Anyway, I'll I'll just give myself a bit of health, and by I mean a bit I mean all of it. <laughs> anyway, so what else can I show in this level? Um, so the sounds have been updated. I've shown that. The, the props, uh, there are a bunch of new props that have been added, uh, primarily to the crates, uh, so the things that are inside of them. So there's been new props that you can now uh, just kind of get by breaking things, which is, you know, just like a small detail. Because primarily, like in this update, like I haven't done a lot of major changes. Since the last update, I've been mainly like polishing things, optimizing things, and just preparing these things for the release. So there isn't much, too much new content. I guess I'm going to show the prison level because the prison level actually has a volumetric lighting and you can see it in its full potential. So yeah, I'm gonna go to the prison level, I think. In a bit. Yeah, there's nothing much here. Oh, I guess the fire particles. The fire, par fire particles have been updated as well. And they have nice, smoky volumetric lighting. As well as the mother flashes. Yeah, that too. Anyway, I am going to now load the prison level. Let's let's do that properly. Let's go to main menu. <laughs> let's not use console. <laughs> and the new game and the grand escape is the one. Yeah, the loading screens have been reworked as well. By the way, uh, this text might probably will get changed on the release because we got the new text recently in. But yeah, let's go. So yeah, there for example, you can already see the volumetric lighting coming from the ceiling. But in, it's in the later level that comes after this that you will really see it in a full potential. What was that? The prison is under attack. They are dropping air bombs on us. All units yes. take cover. <laughs> Evacuate the facility. It's too late. And we're knocked back. Knocked back. And uh, the prison level is loading. The aftermath of the attack on the prison. There we go. So here we are. As soon as the blur effects goes away, because the player was kind of in concussion, you will be able to see the full beauty of the volumetric lighting. How much atmosphere it adds to this level. And it's really nice. This is probably now one of the most good looking levels in the game now, and it is one of the oldest ones as well. Uh, oh, another small detail. The fire now deals damage to you. <laughs> no, it is very important, but just a fa small fact, in update 68 that was not ha 
it didn't deal damage, but now fire actually does deal damage finally. It's a small loot detail, but you know. Yeah, more volumetric lighting. Uh, one thing I did try to do is I tried to set up the lighting in such a way that the bright objects will kind of direct the player where he needs to go. So for example there, uh, there was a health pack uh, here, which player could find by exploring or just by wandering around. And as well as this door, which probably everyone already saw in my update videos as the way to go. But for those players who don't know about it, they will not, with the, with the help of the light, the player player's attention will go that way because he sees a light and then he'll see the door, so he will know that he needs to go this way. And just a small detail on how to how I direct the player to go a certain way. Same here, you see you see a light there, you go that way. You see the green light, you see moving object, and you know that that's the way you have to go. That's kind of how directing the player works in my game, kind of. But it's, I guess, just small detail. Let's go to the next level. Oh yes, so there are the instructions for jumping. Not a very deep issue, but... Yeah, let's get rid of that. And let's go to the next level. Because that level also has a lot of new things. New loading screen once again. So yeah, it is really foggy outside as well because of the attack on the prison wall, well, kind of, but not really. It's a combination of both, it's uh, the smoke from all the explosions, plus just a cloudy day in the combination they make this really foggy kind of silent hillish atmosphere, which I really love in games, so I kind of went for that kind of a, for that approach. Let's break the planks and continue going this way. Oh, one more thing. Um, I don't, again, I don't remember if i shown this in the previous update, but the doors can now be open both ways. This is... Uh, this was quite a struggle to do because my, my old system for doors used animations, so when I had to actually script it, this has created so many issues with how the NPCs react to these doors, with how doors get doors get serialized and saved, and oh boy, creating that was just a pain because I had to convert the old system to use the new door system and it was just a bit painful. Let's see him kill him. still alive, huh? Too bad you weren't lucky enough to outrun me. Sleep tight. Yeah, he killed him. Too bad for him. <laughs> he would have died anyway, so... One more thing I changed. Um, the doors with a key card, they now have a blue light, because previously they were orange. So there's three access panel types, kind of like this. There's the green ones. The green ones means they have a card in them, and which means you can interact with them. The blue ones means they require a, a key card, and it would go in there. And the red ones means that you cannot interact with them at all, or if they're turned off, that means you also can, you cannot interact with them. So that's kind of the logic behind that. Here's the key card. Let's take that and insert it, and it opens the door immediately. And there's a key card which remains. Kill those guys. So yeah, this is my favorite part of this level, with how you can see the guards up front of you. You have the moving light. You have this dramatic music, which was made by Andre, who has pretty much created the whole soundtrack in the game. So really big thanks to him. And I think he will also be playing Red Alliance on his channel or like reviewing it perhaps at some point in the future. So I'm really looking forward to that. But yeah, he's done amazing job on the soundtrack in the game. Oof. You wanna have a button fight then? <laughs> I can take way more hits than you. Oh yeah, this is another small thing. Enemies have bullet velocity. I think I showed this in the previous update, but nonetheless it's a cool thing to show. So the guys are gonna be coming. I'd bring a gun to a button fight, because why not? Don't see him from here. Ooh. 
Oh, uh, flashlight, I forgot. Okay, that's the Tech 9. Um, so another reason why I have made the keycard blue is because this area was previously rather confusing, at least as far as some people told me. Because naturally they would look that way, because there is more light that way, and uh, which is the right way to go to get the keycard, but you would still need to go this way, because this is the way you have to go to progress, but you first need to go to cafeteria that way. So again, changing the light to blue helps it to kind of stand out and attract the player to go here eventually, because if this was to be a different color, like an orange, orange would simply blend with red or the, the fire or just the walls and it wouldn't be as noticeable, but blue is a bit more noticeable, which is good. I might make it brighter, but for now I think it's good. It's, it, it works, and the player will eventually figure out what to do. One more thing I've done actually is uh, the muzzle flashes have been updated. I think I'm using Crypto FX muzzle flashes now, uh, which I got from the asset store, uh, and they are way better than the previous ones. So as you can see, the the muzzle flashes now spawn a lot of sparks as well as the distortion uh, in the muzzle flash, which is just creates a way better feeling when you're firing a gun. As well as that. So the new fire particles have a distortion effect as well. So if you see close, you will see how the air is gets distorted. Again, really nice looking and small detail, which is just convenient. Oof, okay, let's go this way. What is here? Uh, there's one there. Yes, let's kill him. Um, so yeah, again, just go this way for the keycard. Slippery floor. Well. I guess it's slippery because of all the blood of all the corpses. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I don't. I have a lot of blood in this level. Um, so what can I do? I guess the last thing I can do for this update is just to show the the city level, the volumetric lighting in the city level, because that's also where it shines the best. So I'm quickly going to go to that level, and after that I'll probably end the update and let you guys uh, explore the Steam store because that's where you can get the game now. So. Uh, let's go to that level. I'm actually doing it to the console because loading it through the main menu will take longer time. So yeah. Cold autumn wind, empty dirty streets. Yeah, that's pretty much this level. So yeah. Urban hazard. Probably the most dense level in terms of props and the things that are happening in it. Let's, let's let's kill them with an explosion. There you go. Have fun. Yeah, you're now on fire. <laughs> um, I think objects get extinguished, or at least some of them might get extinguished when I mean, you put them in, in the water, but I don't remember. Let's, do I have any more explosions here? I don't remember. Um, no, okay. If you find an explosive, explosive barrel, I will use it to kill the enemies because those are a lot of fun to use my like, for example this one. okay take that <laughs> it's funny how the enemies can actually shoot your explosive barrel and set them on fire this creates a small like panic there I like prop standing in the middle let's keep going because in that part of the city is where we can see the volumetric lighting in its full potential. Uh, I've added the lights here to kind of again attract, attract the player to go this way and to notice the, the stairs. Oh, geez. Oh, he hit me. That sniper is good for once. Oh, <laughs> that's a very interesting way, but you know. That's a very... I've never seen a weapon get stuck like that, but let's just go up here and grab it anyway. Who shot me? You. And you. Okay, so this part. As you can see, the volumetric lighting is coming from the buildings over there and it's creating a really nice visual effect. Let me go, please. Not so fast. 
I have doubts about what you said. You seem yeah, yeah. to be suspiciously nervous. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Suspiciously okay. nervous indeed. Hey, we got the M4 with the Cobra side. Nice. So the weapon, I mean, the game at the moment has, I believe, 25 unique weapons. Which is not the, no, um, that's not the correct way to phrase it. The, the game has like 13 or 12 different weapons, but each weapon has multiple variations, and there's a total of 25 variations. So, for example, M4A1K is a variation, as well as a silenced M4A1, or like a silenced pistol that I had earlier, those are like the variations. So there's multiple things a player can come across in the game. Yeah. Okay, that's, my aim is bad. Oh, this Cobra side helps so much now with an M4 compared to... Oh, I guess I had one as well. Anyway, let, I'll quickly show you the comparison of the other M4, like the non-scoped non, non one. Yeah, you can see what difference it makes. Let's take the good one. Boy. Oof. Let's see, what else can I show in this level? Other than the volumetric lighting changes and some explosions, there's nothing really much, I think. Because most of the things that I've done in this update were related to optimizing and uh, polishing the game game. Really. So most of these levels I just saw in previous updates, they're kind of polished and optimized like, as good as I can be. But yeah, I'm still showing them because these are the levels that I normally demonstrate and I occasionally show the new ones, but primarily these ones. Because I cannot show all the levels. Ooh. Oh! Another fun fact, you can actually interact with soda machines and buy <laughs> cans. It's just a small, funny thing you can do. Anyway, that's just a small thing. Um, look at those guys being evil. That, that, oh no, there's one. I'd be surprised if it didn't. Poor fella. Hmm, the music is still playing. Oh yeah, I have the ad panels now, which were made by Adrian. So yeah, it just adds a bit of detail to the city level, just like, you know, so you can have different ads. Just a small little detail. Uh, I don't know what there's else to see in this level. So the last thing I want to do in this update video before I finish it is I'm gonna quickly play through this. Um, another stealth section in the game, or at least try to, and I'll show it to you. So we are in the spooky corridor, it's a red light, um, and we approach this area where there is a storage, with uh, guards just doing their things, and there is a flood on the floor, and the water is leaking, so they are in a bit of trouble, but let's make it even more trouble for them. There is a fuse box around the corner, and we can destroy it. Darn it. And get rid of the lights. Box has seen better days. Uh, now not only do we have to deal with the flood, but also now the power shut down. Hey, what happened up there? What does it look like? Shit. Hey, can you check up on the fuse box? Maybe it's just a matter of restarting it. <clears throat> sure will. So they're talking about the fuse box, and he is now coming this way to check up on the fuse box. Great. This sure looks safe. Yeah, we knocked him out while he was checking up on the fuse box. If you were to let him stay there and do his own thing, he would eventually come back and continue his dialogue. Uh, which I can show you actually, probably. Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna quickly show that. So yeah, back here. Let's destroy the fuse box and let him have the full conversation. The? Darn it. Looks like the fuse box has seen better days. Uh, now not only do we have to deal with the flood, but also now the power shut down. Hey, 
So this allows for multiple ways of completing a single level. So destroying a fuse box is an example of one of them, and depending on the certain actions that you can take, different things will happen in certain, on certain occasions, not everywhere. So we're far away, so he doesn't see us. Oh yeah, we're not supposed to kill him, I forgot, yeah. Looks like a short circuit. Yeah, fuck that. I won't be dealing with this. So he doesn't want to be dealing with it, so he's coming back to his buddy and he's gonna report it to him. And he's gonna leave the door what open for it? us. Short circuit it seems. Heh. <laughs> no wonder this place is out of order for a few months. Nobody takes care of it. Have you seen the amount of junk out there? Thank God I don't have to go out there. Well, better report this to the commander and get a professional to deal with this mess. Yeah. Now they're done. And let's close the door. And I think we can now sneak past them. And we can go down here. This is a quite a challenging style section pure, purely because there are so many guys here, so it is rather difficult to do, but it is possible nonetheless. So we can see the volumetric lighting here, which means the guard's facing this way, and now he is gone, and now there's another one. And I don't have any silent guns, so this will be difficult to complete. Looks like there have been issues on the surface. Heard there was an intrusion. <laughs> oh, okay, <that's> <laughs> Yeah, this is quite difficult. Let's explode everything. And let's throw a grenade. Oh, I forgot there was better. There was a and I died. Anyway, yeah, this is quite a difficult solution. Um, I think I saved here. Yeah, okay. Ah, shit. I saved the This guy should see whoever it is, he probably isn't Anyway, I think I'm gonna end the update video here. Um, so yeah, there has been a lot of polishing done since the last update, and there might be more. Actually, I don't know. This, I think, is the, probably the last update, purely because the game is now being released, but you never know. I might make more if I have some big changes. But again, I cannot promise anything like that. But yeah, for now, I'm going to end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed. And I, if you want to support me, the best way, like support me and everyone who worked on the game, the best way to do that would be to buy it on Steam. The link for which is in the description, so do check it out. Um, yeah, thank you everyone who has been with me for all of these years and supported us, the development team and me. And... Uh, yeah, I'm really glad that this game is finally now being released. This is quite something for me. So yeah, thank you guys, and uh, I will see you sometime later, I guess. Yeah, take care.